shut up. The show is starting. Hello, everyone. How are you? And this is not my channel. I don't know why I said hi first. Kelly, <laughs> please introduce yourself. I mean, no, you you can totally say hi first. That's that's absolutely fine. Um, hello and welcome um, to my channel. I am Kelly, also known as the Opera Geek. Um, my mom actually named me Kelly. It's not, never mind, it's a long story. Um, so thank you all for being here. And I really would actually like everybody to introduce themselves. And we're going to start with Tanya, actually. Sorry, I got distracted by what Omega just did. I see you, what sir. Did you what did you do? do? What happened? Never. And wow, we look we, at oh my gosh, what, oh my we gosh. might just want to have alerts off, that's all. Alerts are off. Good. Hi, <laughs> I am your uh, apparently stunned Cypher. Um, I'm Tanya, known as Cypher Tear everywhere online. I am very, very glad to be here with so many friends. And uh, really glad that Kelly asked me to join. You can find me here on Twitch, Cypher Tier. I talk a lot on the internet. I do a lot of RPG stuff uh, on Rivals Waterdeep, Into the Motherlands, and uh, starting Thursday, along with Kelly, uh, Cyberpunk Red over on Sirenscape's channel. So I do a lot of RPG things. I also yell a lot on the internet about equality and such. So say hi. Who's next? Uh, like Brian, because I'm looking and he's next. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. I am Brian. I'm Urban Bohemian, variety streamer, a few days a week on Twitch. Um, uh, also, uh, yep, nope, just lost it. I had it, and now it's gone. I'm <laughs> um, really happy to be here and chatting with these lovely folks about this today, and um, hopefully we're going to, you know, we'll, we'll not fix anything, but hopefully we're going to talk about some really great stuff. Um and uh, let's see. Oh, you can see me. Sorry, I forgot about the things that I do. I'm really sorry. Um, but also really excited to uh, be on Rivals of Waterdeep starting January 31st. That's in two weeks. I'm super nervous, but I'm ready. So, yay. Oh, my goodness. She'll be <laughs> fine. You'll be totally fine. Uh, next up is Omega. I got yeah, I got distracted for a second. Welcome to my world. <laughs> and I also realized I didn't actually introduce myself about anything, so I'll do that at the end. So, yes, Omega... <laughs> That's valid. Uh, hey, friends. My name is Omega, uh, also known as the Critical Bard. Critical Bard across all social media channels. I'm an actor. I'm a vocalist, uh, partnered a variety caster uh, on Twitch, uh, Hot Mess Incarnate, hashtag iconic. Uh, what else? Yeah, I just do lots of things. I sing, I dance, I, 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 I be merry. Um, nothing I really want to boost. I'll boost things later, right? Uh, but for now, just happy to be here to talk about some very important conversations. We oui. and Dr. Rachel. Hi, I'm Dr. Rachel Cowart. I'm the research director of Take This, which is the first mental health nonprofit to form serving the gaming industry and the gaming community. I'm also a science content creator, Sightgeist, where I post a new video every week on YouTube talking about the science of games. Yes. And I guess that leaves it to me. Uh, hi, everybody. I am Rafael Bocamazzo, otherwise known as Dr. B, because I have a very long Italian name that nobody wants to mess with. So uh, I am the clinical director. I'm a doctor me? of psychology and the clinical director of Take This, where I work with Dr. Rachel. And I am the moderator for this panel. Uh, but before we take off with the moderation, we got to give Kelly the opportunity to really introduce herself on her own channel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so again, I'm Kelly. Um, I, if you hadn't already guessed, have ADHD and do get distracted quite easily by shiny objects and or anything. I am a professional opera singer. Um, I continue to be that even though there are no operas being staged right now. I am also a content creator um, and I play on multiple tabletop streams as well as streaming here on my own channel, different variety of video games. And now I'm going to hand it back to Dr. B to start the panel. Uh, well, awesome. Uh, so everybody, we are here today. I've like, I, I'm starting this off like a wedding. We are here today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's I be real. I already did that though. No, no. Okay. No, we're not I going to. No. Um, <laughs> oh, wow, Brian. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we hear the term parasocial relationships thrown around a lot more, especially within the content creator community, um, you know, within, 
uh, game devs and so forth. But for this, I really want to ask Dr. Rachel. So we can get on the same page in a nutshell, what are parasocial relationships and what causes them? They are one-sided relationships between a performer and a viewer. So it's a term that came out in the 1950s to explain the relationships we have with the people we see on television, but it's ever more relevant now to streamers. And why do we have them? They are based and they become more strong over repeated exposure and streaming is very popular. <laughs> so as we become repeatedly exposed, yes, to our favorite streamers like we have here, um, we develop one-sided relationships. So it's one-sided because you feel like you have a relationship and an emotional connection with the streamer and that you know them in the same way I feel like I know Jimmy Fallon, for instance, but they don't know who you are. <laughs> you gotta, I love Jimmy Fallon. Well, every, yeah. So let's... For, the, for everybody else here, because you all are, you all put your faces out there into the world. You all stream, you all, uh, many of you write, many of you perform on stages, on film. How do each of you experience these one-sided relationships in the work you do? Ooh. Uh, cautiously on my end. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, because, you know, for a long time, um, I was actually uh, talking to my partner about this, about this panel before uh, we did this. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we, this was something that always happened. We just didn't have this word for it, I think. You know, like the people who would show up at Star's house and, or follow them or think they were married to them, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm... It has unfortunately made me a lot more standoffish, which I don't like. Not that I'm a super cuddly, like, touchy-feely person, but the wall has gotten thicker over the years, which is unfortunate. Well, can you, are you, would you feel comfortable getting into some of those experiences um, in general terms, why that wall has grown thicker? Because it, it, there's a lot of good reasons. Uh, yeah, so, um... One, ex one example that came up, because CB and I have the same example, but I won't steal his. Um, but but Brian, who's one, also one of my moderators, um, shortly after I got partnered, we had someone that really wanted my home address under the guise of like, I want to send your gift. I really appreciate what you do. And I'm super excited for you. And then when I was like, no, I don't even actually know your real name. They got really weird about it. And it was like a light switch had flipped. And then it turned into, well, I don't know why I support you. And it's like that access does not buy you my home address. It does not buy you that kind of access to me because, you know, it's going to sound terrible, but this is transactional. We provide whatever entertainment we provide. We sing, we play games, we do RPGs, whatever. And if someone likes what we do enough, they choose to support us monetarily. And that's cool and we're appreciative, but you need to understand that just because you give me $5 a month or even $25 a month on Twitch... That doesn't mean you get to know my home address, always jump in games when I'm streaming, et cetera. So it just, that was kind of the first thing where I'm like, okay, cool. You're a Twitch subscriber, but that $5 doesn't get you that much. There are people I've known for years that don't even have my home address. So let, let's let's uh, add another layer of bricks to this wall and uh, maybe go out and get a P.O. box. And if people really want to send me something that bad that don't know me, here you go. And, and I see Omega just, just <laughs> nodding his head, just, just no, I feel like his head agreeing is, with this. I feel Tanya, like said, <laughs> Tanya said it perfectly. I mean, we can talk about many things, but I just want to harp on that one for a second. Um, how, I mean, I guess just a way, a way I've experienced it. If a, if a person's streaming a game or whatever, and their game possibly, it possibly is multiplayer or whatever, mm -hmm. a small way you are going past that boundary, you know, you, like uh, you are um, showing what a parasocial relationship is by you automatically believing just because you subscribed or you're followed that you are now um, you have every reason to now ask me to be a part of this game that you're doing on your stream. And it's like, unfortunately, as a partner streamer, as a black streamer, as a queer streamer, I have to be very specific about who I allow on my channel, who's speaking on my channel at every at any given time. Because if you say some headassery, my apologies, if you say some stuff 
uh, that could make my brand and my channel look bad, then I'm going to be looking like, one, I'm going to be feeling silly for even allowing you to be there. But then I'm like, why did I allow you to poison my community? And I'm not saying you're going to, but that just means I have to vet who who I trust and who I know will will make sure they're doing what they need to do so my brand, quote unquote, looks good as well uh, or remains untainted, if you will. Um, but there are so many people who, wow, uh, there are so many people who will get almost annoyed that I say no, that they can't join the game I'm playing. And it's like, uh, again, you do not, just because you've subscribed, you've played four ninety nine or got gifted that sub, um, it does not give you a one-way ticket towards my Fs. Uh, you don't get to automatically be a part of this just because you've bought your way in. Um, that requires trust. That requires a true thing called friendship. That it's it's more than you know just being here and like oh okay well I'm here now so I guess we're close now right no so yeah yeah that the gaming thing I almost every time I stream a, a multiplayer game someone I've never met asks can they play and I'm like you can that's that um so I mean I've obviously experienced some of it streaming um, including people who have upon finding out some members of my chat are my real life friends, asking them where I live, um, uh, how they can find me. Thankfully, my friends are not dumb. <laughs> but um, also, I know Omega and I experience this in a certain way as well in performing, live performance, especially when you have patrons um, who believe that the price of a ticket means, for instance, that they're allowed to touch you and grab you to make you take a photo with them, or that it entitles them to corner you, uh, basically, and talk to you, or try to find out your schedule, um, follow you from the stage door. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot of lines and boundaries, and being as the fact that my brain doesn't work like a lot of normal people's brains, I can see how some things might need to have a gentle, that's not okay, because people might not understand it. But once you hear that's not okay, you have to stop. Because our safety and the safety of any performer comes first. Also, never grab anybody for a photo, please. This period. Good rule for life. Yeah, don't, don't grab people for Especially photos. Especially if they're in like a 40-pound costume, because I'm just going to fall over. I'm not even joking. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it's happened, my experience, it's happened less for me, though not that much less with streaming, and more just for me, because I came to this with, um, from um, from blogging and food blogging and social media, Um the, the main thing, and a lot of food bloggers talked about this, the main problem with what we do is it's often in real time, very easy to find out where we are and kind of see us. And so for me, it was people who were pushing that boundary and it seemed, you know, for, I'm sure in their mind, it seemed like the most harmless thing to do, but like they would ask me if like they could sit down and eat with me or if I wanted to join them for food or a drink. And I'm like, no, um, because I don't know you. And there were, there, there have been a few incidents where exactly like the, like all of a sudden it was a snap, like now, you know, I kind of liked what you do and now you're just being a butt and, and, and I'm going to like trash you. And, and I, like, I, I once sat through brunch while somebody was on social media, basically saying what a horrible person I was because I wouldn't join them. And, uh, like like you know i'm even the staff is like do we need to have them leave and i'm like this is this is awkward this is awkward so it's it's really just understanding and trying to figure out where those boundaries are and, and realizing like you know someone but you don't know them well um and th this may be something well this is definitely something that all of you can comment on um from different perspectives but that person you know quote unquote on screen is a projection. It is a one-sided one projection of a more complete person that is kept off screen. I mean, it even goes, it even happens in little ways. Like we've, we've all talked about this. I don't care privately if you all call me by the name my mom calls me because I know you all. 
But mm-hmm. if you start doing that on stream, randos start calling me that and it is deeply uncomfortable. They're calling me something so familiar and so intimate when they don't know me. So I wonder well, how do you educate people on that um, on that line between your identity as a content creator, as a performer, versus your identity in your private life? I'm going to hop in real quick. And I think first and foremost, it all depends on the person, but it depends on what they, it, it all, not to hearken to this, but it's like it comes to pronouns. If I say I'm he, him, then I'm he, him. If I say I'm she, her, I'm she, her. If I say I'm she, they, then I'm she, they. If I personally say I do, I say I'm Omega Jones, also known as Critical Bard. I am giving you permission to call me either Omega Jones or Critical Bard. But if someone like Tanya says I'm Cypher of Tear, did not say her first name. Her first name might be out there, but then from then on, you refer to me as Cypher or Cypher of Tear because that's the boundary that I have placed and given you. Unless I've told you personally that you can call me by my first name or we've gotten to that basis, then call me by what I have asked you to call me. If Kelly says, call me opera geek, then call me the opera geek. You know, it's, it's like that. Obviously, we can find your name out there. We've all done like articles or whatever. But if this is like, you know, what I say my name, it's almost akin to a stage name as well. There are many people who have stage names and though you might know their real name, their stage name is what they are. That, that's their title. That's who they are. So it's honestly, for me, as simple as just respecting what they've asked. And if you can't do the basic thing and just respect someone, that's a problem. Period. Like, again, for me, like, just using me as an example, I'm okay with being called Omega Jones because that, that is what I've placed out there. I could have easily taken off my name off of my Twitter and everything and just put Critical Bard and left it at that. But I said... You know what? My name's Omega. I also go by the Critical Bard or CB or whatever. Um, but that's me. It's all on a case by case basis. My boundaries are not Kelly's boundaries, are not Dr. Rachel's boundaries, are not Brian's boundaries. Like we all have different ideas of what we personally want. So get to know that person, understand that person and what they need and what they would like for you from you, and go from there. That's me. So what about the rest of you? Like, I mean, some of us have more obvious stage names than others. How do you distinguish and even educate people on that differentiation between your home life and what you put on screen? I like how none of us went first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what? I'll just I'll just put it out there. My real name is out there. Um, and uh, a friend of ours, uh, Pleasantly Twisted, you know, She actually had to curb calling me by name because, like Omega said, there'd be people in the chat that would greet me. Hey, Tanya. And I'm like, who Who are you? And I finally was just like, do I know you in person? Because if so, your screen name isn't picking up anything. This even happened recently with someone I've known for like 15 years who popped in the chat, was super familiar. And I was like, I'm not going to drop the F-bomb because we're front page. I want to, but I'm not. Um... (laughs) But I was like, um, Homest? Because they're the Twitter or the Twitch name they chose was nothing like anything I'd pick up. Mm-hmm. And even when they were like, oh, yeah, my name is like blah, 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 it still didn't click because I immediately went into fight or flight mode because of things I have experienced on the platform. So it's not just distinguishing my personal and private, or I'm sorry, my private life and my on screen, you get to see me in these moments. It's when people, who have known you for a long time cross the streams and they have no idea about Twitch culture, about online culture, and they want to pop in and support. But it's like, cool, you may have known me for 20 years. The people you are in this chat with have known me, maybe known me, maybe 20 minutes. And you coming with the in-jokes and over-familiarity, that'd be cool if we were at a bar and kicking it, doesn't work the same way. So it also goes with when your real life, aka off-stream, converges with stream chat and stream life it's so weird it's i mean this is such a new frontier nobody i I don't know of anybody's parents who instead of sitting down and saying you say please and thank you when the server brings you your food you know sits down with their kid and says okay that's a streamer you don't call them by their first name unless they give you permission um so i'm gonna address something i just saw in chat Mm. um where someone said 
performers want the benefits of a fan-based income with none of the downsides, I find it hard to feel bad. I'm sorry, what? This is, I, okay, I missed no, no, that no. one. This is, wow. okay, so this is my job. This is my job. I have a degree in performance. Sure, you might be a fan, which still feels very, it feels very weird, honestly, I think for any of us to say that. We're back. Hello. Hi. Hello. As as promised, he's very concentrated because he knows where the treat is on the desk. <laughs> Do you want to look that way? Do you want to look that way? Do you want to look up? And down. And there you go, Buffers. Yeah, you chew so loud. No. <laughs> I'm not touching anything else on my computer because apparently moving the mouse was too much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, thanks for everybody. Thanks everybody for hanging on and uh, continuing to hang out with us because I, I think we were we were getting into a really important point, and we're going to back up a little bit for context for those of you who are maybe just joining us. We're talking about parasocial relationships, the one way relationship that can exist frequently in fandoms, and that seems to be especially powerful in streaming and content creation. And we had an unfortunate comment just a few minutes ago that basically said, streamers want all the fan-based income without any of the downsides that come along with it. And we got some feels about that. <laughs> Kelly? <clears throat> I know you had some things to say about this. You know, hold on. I got to make myself mad again. No, that's okay. I, I'm, I'm a ginger. I'm mad all the time. That's the secret. <laughs> okay. So. I tried to be nice last time. I'm really tempted to not be, but it's okay. Um, just because someone is a public figure does not mean that we have to tolerate abuse, harassment, degrading messages, sexual messages, anything that crosses a boundary that much and honest to god we are sick of hearing people say that we can't respond to that we're sick of people whining you can't quote tweet me because you're too big of a thing well then you shouldn't have said it period if you don't want someone to respond don't say it because we're going to and we are not things we are people we are not objects and if you behave that way, in the least bit, I don't need your $5 a month and neither do any of these people. That's it. Public figures are not things that you can treat the way you want and tell them they have to take it. Because I'll tell you where you can take that, but I can't because this is PG-13. <laughs> I mean, I will. I'll take okay. you. <laughs> We well, only get I, we only get one an hour, so you know. Like, I'm going to take that a step <laughs> further, though, because I, the the specifics of this statement is what's just annoying me. I want the benefits of a fan based income with none of the downsides. So what you're saying is, okay, yes, you're correct. Twitch is about people who are giving their money to you so you can earn a living. That is true, but that's true for many things. Uh, but past that, you're saying just because you gave four ninety nine. Now, I, as a bad, if I'm a bad person, if I'm someone who, who wants to just make your life a living hell, because I paid $4.99, I have every right to now do that, and you can't get mad because you took my money. No. No. That's not how it works. Just because you sat there and decided to give an ounce of something that you have, it does not give you the utmost right to now just be a fuck ass for lack of a better word, and just and make my community worse or just toxic or whatever you want to call that. It's not okay. Just like, just like Kelly said, just because we have this, this position, it does not mean that you can do what you want without consequence. Like, here's the thing. You don't have to feel bad about it. They're still going to catch that block. I don't feel bad about doing that. It's just the truth. And now you didn't paid me and caught a block. So who, who won in, in the end? Um, but without being petty, 
it's still not okay just because you're you are a a person who's decided to make a living or put themselves out there it does not give anyone else the right to now make that person feel at their lowest and get away with it that's just not how humanity or society works you don't get to do something without a consequence if you act up you get done you, you, we all know what happens we've been seeing it in chat already it's that's just how it is whether you pay to be here or not so freedom no is a freedom without the freedom to take the consequences it is the freedom upon which all others are based period just dropping some Pratchett, huh? Uh, who are you talking Duh, to? That was, that was kind of a given. I mean, we were going to have that. I mean, just Discworld quotes everywhere. Okay, sorry, we're done. Well, and so, oh, so here's here's something that I, I've been thinking about as we've been talking. There's, <laughs> uh, there's Tanya. <laughs> what was the what? Yeah. I was there. I you was asked. There. You asked. Yeah. I shall deliver. <laughs> well, Wait, I don't know there. What? Um. What? <laughs> Someone got asked to get blocked and banned. So oh, boom. Oh. <laughs> Literally. Uh, there's okay. So as you've all been talking, there's a quote from an early episode of The Simpsons that keeps coming to mind. It's an exchange between a uh, comic book guy and uh, you know some of the creators of Itchy and Scratchy, where where he's just asking that they're at a convention asking a pedantic question, and you know I hope someone get fired for that mistake. And Bart, Bart claps back with, these people have given you thousands of hours of entertainment. Do they really owe you? This is nothing new, but this is primarily for Dr. Rachel. How have parasocial relationships changed and shifted as media yeah. has changed and shifted? Yeah, it's nothing new, but it is kind of a different dynamic, or at least it's perceived to be a different dynamic, even though it's not. Streamers are still very much public figures that that do not owe their fans anything. Um, but there, our content is available 24 seven, right? There's the up close in nature, up close and personal nature of streams themselves, where I can say, hi, the Opera Greek, and she can say, hi, Sightgeist, and I have that connection, right? I don't, you don't have that with other traditional movie stars or television celebrities. There's this element of fandom, but this is why stronger boundaries are so important. And I'm really glad we're having this conversation for the other content creators here, because you need to set these stronger boundaries from the beginning, because the accessibility of streamers leads to over-familiarity, mm -hmm. right? And that is a constant, constant problem and struggle and balance between fostering community and having those boundaries as a performer. Well, this, it strikes me that this is a real, this is a, a unique medium in, um, in, in that we've never had the level of, of democratic interactivity mm -hmm. that we've had before in other forms of media. And I know that, you know, Brian, uh, Tanya. Well, everybody here is at, is at different points in their streaming career. How mm -hmm. do y'all set those boundaries? I just tell people they can go. That if this isn't... No, seriously. It's real. Because you showed up here. I didn't drag you to this chat. I didn't drag you to my channel. If you're at a convention even, you don't like something I said on a panel, you walked in that room. I didn't drag you there. The only exception being someone I actually know, I may have like literally been like, I'm a nervous wreck, please come with me. But the average person sitting watching this stream right now that may have come across on, you know, front page or through word of mouth. Here's the thing. The way you found your way in this chat, if you don't like what we're talking about, you can backspace right out. Ain't nobody stopping you. And Brian, in his raid welcome video, even has that. Should you find this not to your liking, if for some reason you don't like the content, me, or anything that I'm doing, or in case of spoilers, the exits are this way. That is my mantra. Except Brian did it way more stylishly than I ever could. <laughs> I don't know. To tack onto that, I would say, const like, how, how do we do it as constantly? Like, mm -hmm. I am constantly saying, um, you know, I, I, I know, like, a while ago, I, I said flat out on stream. And I don't know, I think I was just doing a just chatting coffee because that's when I ramble the most. And I simply said, uh, you may feel like you know me, but we're not friends. Mm -hmm. And I felt a little, like, I felt a little bad after it left my mouth. And I was like, okay, no, that's what I meant. And then later on, I was watching another streamer who 
they were talking about that moment and they were like, I actually needed to hear that. And it shook me when I heard it, but it's one of those things where it's like, you actually need to hear that sometimes. So sometimes I feel what I'm doing is I am constantly, I'm catching myself. If I'm about to share too much information, I will actually say, actually y'all aren't entitled to hear that or I don't need to share that with you. It's constant. Um, it, it's really constant for me. And I think it's just as important for the streamer's well-being as it is for the to keep the community as a, as a safe place, as a place where people want to be, as a place where you want to be, as, as your community that you want to foster, to constantly have to set those boundaries because the lines are blurry. I mean, I can't just sit and talk to Henry Cavill, right? He's not going to talk to me on his stream, but I can sit here and talk to Urban Bohemian. Did literally everybody and... sigh in the chat? Like, oh. <laughs> we tried to get Henry Cavill recently for a you stream. We tried to get him on a panel. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, you yeah. have one Geralt at the start of my stream, so you should be content. <laughs> yes, I am. I am. The, you're all in the business of creating community. How do you balance that one directional relationship with creating this community? But like, what, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> creating a community does not mean everyone can walk into my house. It means you can come in my yard. You can come in and hang out for the cookout. Uh, no, you can't come to the cookout. You can come to the potluck. Um, you can bring your individuality but not all of that is allowed into my home. So with that being said, um, creating a community also means weeding out those that don't fit in said community, especially those who sit there and only join said community to be hassles, to be problems, to be those weeds you don't want. Um, and while some of that is hard to uh, gauge because some people are doing it on purpose and some people just don't understand, and that's an entire different, that's a different topic we can get on a little later. Um, but like I always say, I, I want to foster a community that, that is based on um, the pillars of inclusion, diver diversity, accessibility, respect, love, honor these things that I, I hold near and dear to my heart. And if you can't follow one of those, if you can't like this go respect, if you can't respect the simple things I ask of you in my channel, like for instance, I, I, I am striving to not use uh, ableist terms in my channel. Um, and we all know that's hard to do in, in, in life only because we grew up with words saying crazy and, and insane and all that. We grew up with, the, with that was in our lexic um, and trying to get it out is a, is, a, is a process and we understand that it's a process. But if you can't respect that and I keep seeing you do that, I see you don't actually want to be in this community. You don't want to be someone I am close to, then you're gone, you know? So, and I know that was a very specific um, example, but it still comes full circle when you think about these parasocial relationships, when you think about um, people who want to be friendly, whether that's making something for you or gifting a sub to someone or, or, or trying to always be in their corner. If that streamer says, hey, I appreciate what you're doing, back up a little bit. Hey, I, I, I or like, for instance, we all know how many people love to be mod lights in chat. When we just say, hey, the mods got this and you can't respect that boundary, that's a problem. You're, you're, not, you're not adding to the community that I want to foster. You're trying to create your own lane in said community, and that's a problem in itself. So it's, again, it's all about you can create your community, you can curate your community, but those communities still have boundaries and rules, and you have to respect that if you want to be there. Yeah. That's I yeah. Well, I think the other part too is to even dial back a little bit is remember going live and throwing out a discord is not building a community that having a group of people who like what you do in one spot is not a community. Um, Raphael and I actually did a panel about this back in the days when we could go to conventions. Um, you have to actively do the work. You have to cultivate what kind of I guess, vibe that you want there, you know, is this community where people can be open, they can ask questions, they can have dialogue. And this does not mean like good vibes only, only positive stuff all the time. We don't talk about the real world. This is, we can talk about some real things, 
But you need to realize everybody's not operating on the same playing field, that there's socioeconomic differences, there's racial differences, there are identity differences where, like, me and Brian is two black queer people and Omega. God, yeah. <laughs> all good. All, all of us have different experiences, but we're all black and we're all queer. But, you know, Brian and I are closer in age than, than us and Omega. And th- all these things that you have to remember is that you're bringing people from all different points of view, all different walks of life, even geographically. And you have to put in the work. You have to be present. You know, when you decide, here's the discord, I'm not going to be there. You're going to come back. It's going to be like your Animal Crossing house with the roaches and the weeds and just as toxic. So before you even get into like building community, you have to know what a community is and it is not. You make a discord, throw open the doors and go, go with God. That's not a community. Build is a verb. It is an active verb. It is something that you have to continually do as is curate. We have the right as performers to curate the communities that we have built both to uphold the values that we want in the community and to protect the people that are already in the community. Because I don't, like, I'm only speaking for myself here. I've got um, a much smaller community than the other three streamers, like Twitch streamers that are here. I am very protective of my community because once you have worked hard at something, You want to see it thrive. And I think what a lot of people don't understand is that this is work. This isn't a like crock pot that you turn on and just leave it for hours. Is that how that works? I think that's how that works. You just leave it for hours and don't do anything with it. You have to actively work at constantly building the community that you're trying to create or else it's going to get away from you and suddenly your name is going to be associated with things you don't want it associated with because you haven't curated your communities. So how do you all put the, I mean, you, you mentioned this, Kelly, that everybody here and now, you know, Dr. Rachel has started streaming about what, two months ago? Yeah. 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 Just, so, just I mean, everybody level. here <laughs> it, who streams is at very different levels in terms of the sizes of their audience, the sizes of their community, if they're actively building that community. What tips do you have for people for how to do that and cultivate um, basically good boundaries with different audience sizes? Well, I, I mean, again, don't speak for anybody else, but regardless of the size of the audience, the boundaries don't change. Hey, yep, yeah, I was about to say the exact same thing, then I realized I was muted. <laughs> you pull the Kelly. Yay, someone used the mute emote in chat. Um, there's a reason I have one. Um, the boundaries don't change based on the size. Um, so one thing that I learned really early on um, in my opera career was that you don't change your voice to fit the room. You know, whether you're singing in a tiny little studio that you're auditioning in or whether you're singing in a 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 person performance hall, your voice is your voice. It stays the same. You don't change it to fit where you're at. And the same thing goes for your boundaries and your values. They remain the same. They can evolve, but the base level of the lines that you draw in the sand are always there. And they should be regardless of however many people are in your community. Yeah, we are in my, we are constantly having conversations, not only in mine, but in other communities, because I'm a mod for, I'm a mod in Tanya's and we're constantly having conversations about, um, you know, and essentially like the tone, the boundaries, um, the feel of the community. And there are times when our decisions as like me as the discord owner or a moderator or an admin, you know, they may, we'll, we try to direct people towards, you know, like a better outcome, but sometimes people say, well, this is ridiculous. I can do this in other community that I can't do here. And we simply say, okay, this doesn't sound like it's a place for you. Like it is not, there's no malice there. It's clearly like our, our vibe and your vibe do not mesh. This is not the place for you. Um, 
and and that's a, like and it's possible to it's possible to consume someone's content without going any further than that you can enjoy their channel on twitch you don't have to follow them on social media on youtube on uh, discord on snap you don't have to do anything you can just enjoy the hours upon hours upon hours of nearly free content they are giving you and that's it well, and actually, uh, you know, jumping on that, Brian, um, we had a comment from uh, Obo Lauren in the chat a while ago, and this is such a great, she, she always comes in with these great quotes in chats, and in this case, being a patron gets you the art, not the person. Mm -hmm. It's succinct, it mm -hmm. sounds like it sums up a, a lot of what y'all are trying to say about people's entitlement to you across multiple fronts. Oba Lauren, when that's on a shirt, I wear a medium. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I can just dip into Canva when we're off this panel, right? So my computer. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. Merchandise. <laughs> um, but merchandise, it, merchandise, merchandise. Yeah, but it's like, it made me think of something, because uh, it was said to, I think, Dosbiv, who is like a moderator on almost every channel I watch. And that's not being shady. That's because Dosbiv's amazing. Dosbiv uh, is amazing. Dosbiv is amazing, yes. No um, idea how Dosbiv does it. Inhuman. Um, but you know, someone made a comment because, you know, I, I'd like to think that I'm very firm and very clear on my boundaries, both on social media and in the stream. Basically we have the mantra of, we don't do that here. Um, and we actually have a code of conduct for our discord and I take that in other places, but someone felt like they were always being slapped down. They were always being corrected. And it was like, but we've asked you not to do the thing. Why is it hard for you not to do the thing that we have asked you not to do? You are not special. You are not above the rules. Because even if, like, for some reason, let's say CB, Kelly, Brian, anyone on this panel or anyone I know who's watching came in and started acting a little bit not themselves, A, I'd be concerned, but B, the rules would still apply, mod sword or not. I don't care how long I've known you. Because mm -hmm. I thought about that as we we're talking about community. You have to apply the rules across the board. You can be like, oh, they're my friend. They're my buddy. They're a moderator. No, if they break your community guidelines, and it's important that you have them, whether it's simple as we don't do that here, we don't tolerate all the phobias, isms, etc., or you go very in-depth, excuse me, people need to understand that they can't go in like Brian's channel like one way come to my channel, act the exact same way, like, I ain't Brian, I love him, but this ain't his channel. You're not gonna act that way here. And if you That's don't like real. it, and if you don't like it, deuces, I'll send you $5 by PayPal. Have a good night. Uh, you know, and, and, and I was gonna say something else, uh, but it's the, the moment is skipped already, but just like, you know, Kelly said, respect the big, and just like you respect the small. Uh, respect Mac Mercer, but also respect the other D&D uh, GMs you see out there. Just because they don't have a name that's out there and visible doesn't mean you don't show them the respect. But what I really want to get at, just especially because Tanya just said that, here's the thing. Especially when it comes to these parasocial relationships, when it comes to these things, these ideas that people have. If you act out of pocket with me, you think I'm not talking to Tanya? You think I'm not talking to all these other streamers so they can watch out for the signs, so they can be aware of what's happening so they don't deal with the things I have? Uh, no. Uh, so you got to understand that real quick. Uh, we don't play that game. Um, and it's not to like sit there and give your, um, get your information and like talk about you. It's not about being shady. It's not being catty. It's about making sure that people are safe. So if someone is doing something that isn't okay, and I know someone who has you in that channel, I'm gonna let that person know about your actions so they can make the choice, uh, whatever choice they decide to make, they can make that with the knowledge of what is going on. Um, because that's what we have to do. We have to be prepared. We have to be um, ready to, to make sure not just our community, community is curated, but the friends that are fellow streamers, their communities are also curated. So know oh. that. Because you better believe if something goes off in somebody's channel and I have mod access, I'm like, here's some screenshots. Here's some names. You do with them what you will. But just so you know, this happened. Oh, yeah. Our team, our team has, our, our team essentially has meetings and it's like, this happened. This is what they did. And very often you will find yourself unwelcome and removed from all of our communities. 
Yeah, and I the, everybody here who's telling this, they they are not being hyperbolic. Like seriously, I've seen some of those screenshots. <laughs> Look, and I'll and text I get you. A text message from Tanya, and I know she's having an off day. I'm like, what's <laughs> going on? And then she shows me the receipts. Oh, I don't get. There's nothing to lie about. We have 100 percent have list of reported and blo blocked people, just in case we hear we somebody sees a name like I recognize that name. Pull up the uh, the facts real quick. Yep, they're right here. I mean that that just happened with you and you and me, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh the no, because who... Kelly tweeted something, and I was like, "So the name, though." Yeah, uh -huh. give me the name. I just want to talk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Immediately, as soon as I said the name, they're like, "Aha! Yeah, no, I know who that is." You know, like Dasbiff just said, there's two reasons a streamer is going to know your name: either you're awesome or you're not. God, true. And I actually continues to be awesome. <laughs> I want to I want to comment on something only because I mean I'm really really not trying to make it a Q&A and not really comment on everything we see. But someone said something and I'm calling you out. You're already banned. Sorry about it. Um but they I'm said the viewer, I'm not at all. Um the viewer is the least um the least sorry, what is it? The least the, the least, least protected, protected, protected person. person in this environment. <laughs> And that's yeah, sure. false. Totally false. <laughs> because that, you that have ridiculous. the executive decision. You have the executive ability to scroll through and click on somebody's thing and type your hat assery. You have the ability to do that. You don't need protection in that case. You made the, the very clear choice to come into my house and disrespect me in my own home. If you do that, then don't be pressed when we come back at you with some at blocked. Um, you, on the flip side, we can't always see the streamer can't always see when someone comes into their stream. Uh, I'm gonna take a, a very clear uh, example from the other day. You all know I was pop champ for a day. We all know this. Um, my mods, thank you, Dad Smith, calling you out again, and so many people. There were so many people I wasn't even aware of that got blocked uh, and banned at that point because it was constant. It was constant. How can you say that the viewer is the least protected person when someone like me or anyone gets bombarded with racial tirades and, and bigotry 24-7? I know we're kind of going on a, on a tangent with that, but I'm just, just trying to get you to understand when we have these panels just understand that we're not saying it just to be talking out of our asses. These are very clear and very real things that streamers go through. So we're just trying to give you a little bit of knowledge. And if you don't want to accept that knowledge, just as Tanya just said, you don't have to be here. And as Brian says, the exit is in one of these doors. Pick one. I always say if there's a window, you could jump out of that one too. Like, you don't have to be here. <laughs> Look, you it's don't. a digital window. You won't get hurt. <laughs> You can go. I'm I'm curious, uh, Dr. Rachel. What? Why? Why? Why does this entitlement happen? <sighs> because I mean, we we see we we saw what happened with with CB earlier this week. We we've heard stories from Tanya. We've heard stories from from Kelly. We've heard stories from Brian. We've all seen it. We've all experienced it at different levels. Why? Oh, I think we all know why. Because people think there's no repercussions on the internet. But there are repercussions on the internet. There are, um, as we've already seen in this stream here. I think what's really important to take away from here is that streamers are real people. And just because you feel like you're anonymous and you think they are performers and they somehow owe you a sense of attention um, doesn't give you the right to say what you want, they can ban you. I mean, mm -hmm. basically, we're all opening our doors and saying, come in, come hang out for a while. And like Omega said, if you come in and you're disrespectful, you are going to leave. <laughs> Just like you can't go to Costco without a mask and they can kick you out, we can also ask you to, to, take, to take the exit. But you know, this is also why it's so important for the content creators that are here watching. It's not only your right, but it's your responsibility to set these boundaries or the community does get away from you, right? So we choose to watch streams based on the streamer. It's much less the content. People find that consistently we are here for the streamer. The streamer sets boundaries and if you don't like them, then you won't get to be there. So, um, what do you say we we kind of, we end the first hour on that note? 
we take a we take a five a five ish minute break and uh, stick a, make sure you stick around everybody because we are going to be allowing some audience Q and A uh, in the latter portion of the next hour that we're going to be talking so please make sure to stick around uh, warning we will not be able to answer your individualized questions if you have a situation going on in your stream you want individual attention for I know some of these people can be hired for consultation I encourage you to do so. Um, but yeah, we'll, let's take a five-ish minute break and then come back and have the second hour of this. Yes. Um, hang out. Don't go anywhere. We're going to throw up a break screen, chill out, and we'll see you in five.
Hello, we're back. How is everyone? Thirsty. Look, my glass, I don't know if you can read it, but it's it. Well, you can't read it, but it, oh. it, it, uh, it has the 2020 sentiment on it. We're in a pandemic. I'm always thirsty. So. Thirsty Thursday. Oh, those oh. come back soon. Well, um, I mean, well, I've, I have switched from tea to bourbon, if that is the time that we are, we are mm -hmm. at. That's where we're at. Mm -hmm. I have a, gin, I have a lovely gin and tonic. <laughs> How's well, everyone doing? <clears throat> we are back. I think we're, I think we're about, now that everybody has gone into the second hour, and we all, most of us anyway, have different adult libations, as oh, opposed Dr. to the Rachel. water and tea we were drinking. <laughs> Sorry, oh, Dr. No. Rachel. Oh, no. My oh. peppermint tea with honey in my Freud cup. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you, everybody, for sticking around for the second hour. Uh, a as we go through this, if you have any questions for these panelists, and we are definitely not going to be able to get through all of them, make sure to hit us up in the chat, beginning with exclamation question. Thank you. That's the command, right, Kelly? Yes. Questions. 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 Well, type, yeah, type question. Oh, excuse me. I yes, apologize. Type question beforehand before you post so we can actually see it very clearly. Yes. And also, and, uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, and again, if you are asking for individual recommendations or advice, we cannot give that because your stream is different from our other moderate, uh, from our other panelist streams. And additionally, this is about their expertise, not consultation. Although I, like I said before, I do know several of them are available to be hired for consultation on that. I'm, uh, Kelly, I, I know Kelly everybody is here muted. is big on the pay us front. What, Tanya? No, someone in chat said you were muted. muted. Oh, I'm always muted. <laughs> That's a safety precaution. <laughs> yes. For y'all. <laughs> so, if so, you want to ask a question, oh, I'm hearing oh, myself. Um, I don't know. I we may have already had some things we wanted to talk. About. Oh, there's an extra arm. Oh yeah, yeah. We still got stuff to talk about, but we're just saying, just in general, if you want to <laughs> ask questions, you can start prepping Body questions arm. with questions in all caps, <laughs> then the question, and one of the mods will grab it, um, um, so we can see it. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Let's try this out. Yes, you can use your. Pirate Jesus emotes if you got him in chat. Oh, it didn't. That's all. That's sure. all you're gonna. That's all you're gonna see of him. So you just want to see his question, all caps, and then a colon, and then. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, do we want to talk back. about anything else, or are we just doing all Q and A for the second half? No. I well, we've definitely we've definitely got some other things we wanna mm -hmm. um, we wanna talk about, and one of them is. Th this is something that's near and dear to me. Um, just because I'm very, I'm very public about my autism and for a lot of folks with the, you know, on the spectrum and for a lot of other folks who have other neurodevelopmental needs, asynchronous, not in-person communication, like via text or chat is really important for us because we can't always respond in real time. And so at the same time, reading the room is sometimes a challenge. So how do you, how, what are the tips you all have for how to read a room since, uh, since every chat's a little different? Um, observe, see how people are interacting. And uh, also realize that if, learn what the badges on Twitch mean, because I've been in chats where people didn't know like what the pink diamond, which is a VIP badge <laughs> or, um, like what the sword means. Now, if you're on Twitch long enough, you should know a sword means moderator. Um, but read the room, see how people are interacting. Like, is this chat where it's okay to get a little lewd? Or is it a chat where people are being, you know, super serious conversation? I'm playing a very dark and grim game. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just in any case, especially if you're new to a chat, don't come in and get over familiar. Don't come in and say things like step on me, daddy, or stuff like that. Um, Cause it's creepy. I don't know you or, you know, in the case of like, I've seen people do this to Brian and CB and especially in Brian's case where they're like, oh, your voice. And I'm like, you've been here five minutes. Could you not? It creeps me out. And isn't <laughs> I'm sorry, Brian. I did not mean to make you spill. She but please, that so well. I wasn't even looking. That's the funny part. I was looking at my camera. 
So I didn't even see that Brian was taking a drink. But if you'd like to expand on that, Brian. Um, I, uh, yeah, I, I definitely, it is really difficult because I, I think, I think the biggest problem that, or not problem, um, but the biggest difficulty or misunderstandings we've had are with people who, um, who have a difficult time processing, you know, processing what is behind the meaning of text and, you know, whether it is silly or sarcastic or serious or questioning and, you know, you have somebody who is live sometimes trying to process that themselves. We are, we're trying to figure out, are you kidding? Are you trolling? Are you, you know, and certain people who we know, we know you're playing. So I do think that it helps again, um, like I said earlier, constantly to constantly establish, to constantly talk about comments that are cool comments that are okay. Um, I know Tanya and I literally will say Cypher of Tear and Urban Bohemia can get away with that. Y'all can't. Like we actually say this because people don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a lot of channels which unfortunately don't, um, I mean, I'm, it's, it's not shade, it's not a call out, it's not dragging, but they don't do that work. They just turn the camera on and they let chat fly at unbelievable speeds and they just, you know, and, and anything, and it becomes an anything goes area. And a lot of people here, we don't have the luxury of doing that on the internet. You know, you, you basically have black people, queer people, women here. We don't have the luxury of just letting anything happen in our chats. So I feel like that is to constantly just honestly, just constantly, um, when you see things that may be misunderstood, um, or don't be afraid to, if you see a conversation in chat getting out of hand, don't be afraid to gently, um, sorry, one of the comment just caught me off guard in chat um yep. ditto don't be afraid to gently oh, i charge <laughs> gently. <for that. laughs> I, can't. I mean that, that probably costs more than five dollars a month i'm just it's like, definitely gonna cost. we refrain from swearing for the most part y'all can refrain from those sorts of comments that costs way more than a tier yeah. three sub even I'll be right honest. that so, is that is only fans tier stuff um, so. so yeah i i really think it's you know as we've a lot of things we've said wrap into this um you know, it, it helps if you and your mods and the term mod light was used really well because I have people who are new and try to mod light, but I have most of the people. And like, if you've even just been in this chat, you've seen, there are a bunch of them. There are a bunch of people in this chat who understand how these communities work. Their con their comments, their conversation is lending to this content, lending to people in chat, understanding that's the kind of, that's the kind of thing you want. Um, you know, and I can never speak for how anyone's going to interpret anything, but yeah, um, kind of watch the flow of conversation. And I know I, people have likened it to going to a party where you don't know anyone and being unafraid to talk to people. What do you do? Most people, most people like me, I kind of stand in the corner and I suss things out before deciding if I'm going to talk to somebody. It can be very similar in a Twitch chat. If you're new, you really have to see how things are. And um, maybe it's for you, maybe it's not for you, but yeah. And I have other thoughts, but I want other people to talk first. Oh, I'm going to address something that was just said. Uh, yeah, free-for-all chats are an expression of freedom of speech, like it or not. No, I'm not the government. Thanks, bye. And if you uh, want a free-for-all chat, you can have one. But every community doesn't have to have one because it's their community and they have their rules and they have their guidelines. And, and my advice, which has already been said, would be lurk and read the guidelines of every community because what you can say on one channel is not what you can say on another. So find a different channel that, that allows that. I'm sure there are a million chats where you can go and just chat is accessible and that's what you like. Oh yeah. I can direct you right that way by way of banning you. Yup. Because here's the thing. All of us here, in some way or another, have been harassed, spoken to, misspoken to, talked to like we're pieces of meat. And that we're here literally just for entertainment, forgetting that we are real live human beings. And then when this camera goes off, I got things I got to do. I have people I need to check in on. There is a community that I have fostered and built that you and your, oh, teehee, it's the internet. Those days are gone. I know that 2020 has ruined a lot of us. But you don't get to dictate to a streamer that I'm going to come in and do whatever you want. Screw your rules. You know what? You That's a one-way ticket to Blocksylvania. Blocksylvania. I want that on a hoodie. Uh, look, I, I got, I, I I got Canva. 
I think I there's Canva. like 20 things we've said that we need to put on. There's just going to be one map of Canva document with just, yeah. Uh, and Blickamore is in the chat. So Blickamore, I, I will throw some money your way if you want to design stuff. Here's Canva. Here's some fonts. Go forth. See, I'm going to oh, talk about yeah. Block City, babe. Block, Block City, babe. <laughs> like, that's me. Like, yeah. And like, like Cypher points out, the work doesn't stop when the camera turns off. Mm -hmm. It's like the same people that think that um, Omega and I are just going to have a little moment moment here together. Same people that think that think that we can sing just because that's how we were born and we don't train for it. And they don't want to pay us because it's not like you have an instrument or anything. Yeah. Your voice is an instrument. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the work is constant. It's not a job that gets left at five o'clock. It's just not how it goes. It's not a shot. It's just all you get is my delicious drink. Be quiet. I'm not muted. <laughs> he was sorry. <laughs> he thought I was muted. He was giving me a drink. So here's, <laughs> this is this is sort of a weird question um, I was thinking about last night, is that there are some of us who have become legitimate friends with some people in our chats. Mm -hmm. If you are a member of a chat... How can you tell the difference whether this is uh, whether the streamer that you're watching is your friend or is just being nice to you because that's customer service essentially? I I'm gonna comment on that because I I think about this all the time when I go into Tanya's chat. Um, I mean, many people chat, but I think about Tanya Tanya specifically because I know Tanya a little more personally now uh, than most. Um, but when I come in, she still reserved, she still reserves, she still deserves respect as a streamer, respect as a woman, respect as a, as a person in this industry. Um, no matter if I'm a friend or not, I can, you know, I can kiki and have fun and be chill, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, I am in her space and I'm going to respect her rules, how she wants them to be. Because in this space, though we are friends at that moment, I am a viewer. She is a streamer. I might be a viewer with a sword, but I'm a viewer nonetheless. And she is the streamer. So you have to make sure that uh, you understand those optics. Yeah, I, I can be friends with anybody, but there are things that I can do with you offline that I would not do with you online because someone else is going to take that as a, oh, if they're doing it, I can do it. False. It's and now it's, how it works. Yeah, it's also a matter of, at least for me, I have, um, I compartmentalize in my head. These are my friends who also happen to be colleagues, but when they are working, they are colleagues. It is a completely different um, way of approaching the, the friendship. You know, you're not going to just be able to waltz in and do whatever you want and say, oh, well, don't you know who I am? No, that's not how you behave. You wouldn't go into your friend's office and do that. I mean, if you, I mean, maybe some of you would, I don't know, it's a little weird, but just remember, that respect is literally the first step in any kind of relationship, mm -hmm. whether it's friendship, whether it's colleagues, anything. And for me, like wondering, you know, because yeah, a lot, there are, there are a lot of different types of content creators and streamers, YouTube, Twitch, um, et cetera, out there. Some have the blanket term friends for their community. Some will always say, I love you all um, as a standard thing. Um, a lot of us, I, for one, do not do that. Um, but if you're wondering, I guess for friendship for me, and I especially kind of pull this back to the internet as a whole, um, you can know a lot about a person from their Twitch feed, from their social media, from their Instagram. For me, from my, my blog was like a personal, it was a personal blog for many, many years. But for me, the difference is, do you know that, do you know something about me because you read it online or do you know something about me because we have talked about it personally? And for me, that is a huge, huge, huge gap. Um, you know, people know what I do for a living. They might, you know, they know, they know roughly where I live, but that's all because they've seen me say it online. We haven't had DMs. We haven't had phone calls. We've not written letters, that kind of thing. That's, a, that's for me is a big fall off when I only know something about you because you posted it online. Any other 
let any other um, comments on that before we've got it. We've already got some great questions coming in and we want to make sure to get to uh, as many of those as we can. Um, any, any thoughts before we get into those questions? Mm, no, cause okay. I'd just be repeating what other people said, but better uh, <laughs> that okay. not, not me. Never mind. Oh, they did. She was about to say better. I need a fan. <laughs> what they, they said it better. I cannot word. I'm flustered. Well, you're also running production. Yeah, you're, you're also running everything. production. Yeah. Incidentally, I want to take a second and thank Tanya for running the production on this, so that I wasn't stressed out of my mind any more than I am right now. <laughs> but uh, yes, Tanya Cipher of Tear is an amazing person. Go follow. Thank you, Tanya. Subs. Thank you. She's giving me so, the look, and I don't care because I am so many th states look? away. No, <laughs> the please stop. You you are perceiving me, and I just want right. to sit here. She's about to disappear <laughs> off camera. Look, yeah, like <laughs> I'm just gonna throw something over my camera. I'm not here. <laughs> Smoke bomb. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> um, Okay, so let, we've got to, we've already had we have some great questions already, um, and these are absolutely wonderful. If you have questions for our panelists, make sure to type it in with the exclamation point questions before your question, so we can see it a little easier. Um, we will not be able to get to all of them, but uh, we will try. And one of them, uh, I will just ask Dr. Rachel about really quickly. Hey, does Take This plan on putting out any sort of infographic or anything about parasocial relationships? Maybe something on your stream, Sightgeist? Um, well, I have a YouTube channel called Sightgeist and we post every week. It's just me. I post every Wednesday. Um, there is a video coming out about parasocial relationships. Um, not, and I think it's next month. This month is all about gaming addiction. That's if that's your jam. Um, but yes, if you go to youtube.com slash sitegeist, we have video content every week and parasocial relationships specifically related to streaming is one of the videos coming up. That is awesome. Um, okay, so let's, how do we as streamers get this message across to those who should be here to listen but don't have the emotional maturity to be here preemptively. I think we'll, I, basically how do you get people to listen who aren't there ready to listen? I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not even <laughs> going to pretend I got an answer because as, as all of us have said in preparing for this panel and the many times we have DM'd and tried to find a day we can all come together, the very people that need to be here probably aren't going to be here. It's the people who know these things and they put them in practice and for those are the people that know us and are in our communities, it's going to be kind of a, oh, that's cool. I'm learning more. But the real people, and, and Kelly and I know exactly who we're talking about, the folks that forget that the person on your screen is not your BFF that need to be here and don't want to hear this. Because if you say, hey, I think we're having this talk. I think I think it'd be good. You could see the, like, the shutter coming down if you told anyone that because they'd never want to hear that. Or you'd get the, oh, man, a lot of people need to hear that from the people who need to hear that. Mm -hmm. Well, how do I, the, this is something people can carry with them into their friends. I mean, peer, peer examples are a fantastic way of influencing things. I mean, we, we see that we, we've already talked about watching to see what other people do by being the example of of the change essentially you want to be in other chats you carry these lessons outward so you know but it, it also comes to out the, of the moderator role for a moment <laughs> but no man no you're just as uh, able to answer things just as lead the conversation uh but it goes into the fact that i can educate you not for free um but <laughs> i um because no but i have no i have no qualms educating you when I, I believe you truly just want to learn and you are ignorant, not in a negative connotation, you just truly, excuse me, just don't know. I can, excuse me, Jesus. Thank you, Vaca Mule. Um, <laughs> I can, um, I can, I can give you that, that information that Google can also give you, but I'll give it to you personally. So you understand, but past that, 
if you still don't want to listen and there's a difference between still being unsure and just not listening. We can tell the difference. If you just don't want to listen, it is not up to the streamer or the professional or the content creator or the person with a high profile to continuously educate you. They have the ability to say, I'm good. Go learn it on your own. Go to Google. Go to Bing. I don't know. Dogpile.com. Whatever is still out there. Go to those things because there's nothing else I can do that's going to get through you. You have the ability to say no. I'm done. I'm backing up because it's only going to lead to emotional, emotional and mental turmoil for you as a, as a, as a streamer. When you start to go, okay, am I saying it wrong? Am, am I, what am I not getting through? Like, why am I, then you realize, no, it's not about, it actually wasn't you. It was the person who just refused to listen. Some people in the society just refuse to listen. So don't give them that, 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 don't give them your time anymore. Don't give them your efforts past that. In my opinion, that's just me, but still. Mm -hmm. well, one of the things I, th I think I hear you saying in there is that there's no one way to do this. Essentially, as the content creator, you create the own boundaries within your community. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I strongly suspect that this is something that new, new streamers need to hear because we're getting a lot of questions about what do new streamers do? What do new streamers do? And it sounds like it's coming up over and over and over again with a lot of folks on this panel that as a streamer, this is your house. I do want to quickly say something though, and it might be controversial, but I don't care. Um, just because we are saying a thing, don't take our word as law. No one can be your stream coach. It's all going to be on you. It's going to be how your community is, how you want it to be, what you believe your own boundaries are, how you go about doing X, Y, and Z. No one can tell you the definitive way to being successful. It's not a thing, period. We all get there at different ways in different ways. So just take what we're saying. I'm not saying take it with a grain of salt, but just these are just little tips and tricks. These are not rules. These are not the Ten Commandments. These are just what we have seen and what we can give you from our own point of view and our own personal feelings on the matter. That's all. Yeah, and also, you know, don't be afraid to talk to someone who's streaming. Now, now keep in mind, we don't mean go in someone's stream when they're live and go, I want to start streaming. Tell me how to do it because we've all had that happen. No, like someone literally like they follow, they hung out for a while and they're like, hey, I really like your chat rules. Do you mind if I use this as a template? Please go forth. Do things like that. Or just like if you see someone, if you see the vibe in their community and you like how they've got there, maybe Twitter DM them. If they've got a Discord, just go, I really like how you run your community. Do you, do you have time? And may I offer you a coffee in these troubled times? Because time is money and money and my time is valuable as is all our time. Um, or just observe other streamers. Go, that fits how I want to run my channel. And at the end of the day, this is not a democracy. I know I saw somebody trying to do the First Amendment. We're not the government because if we were the government, we wouldn't be in this predicament. First off, we wouldn't have stolen an election. Second. And third, this is our house that we willingly let you into, that you chose to step across the threshold like a vampire. If you don't like it, there's the door. Nobody's keeping you here. Instead of screaming and kicking and going, oh, y'all are mean. You don't let me basically walk in and walk all over your face. You can go because you can be thrown out or you can walk out. And if you learn how to act, maybe you can come back one day. Who knows? Oh, more questions are coming in and these are fantastic and I'm trying to get them all. That's okay. And I'm going to, I'm going to reiterate something CB said, uh, I'm not going to steal our F-bomb. I think that should be for Kelly for the second hour. But stream coaches are bullshit. Do not pay anyone to teach you how to stream. Because nobody can guarantee your success except for you. And if you see somebody who's selling a stream coach book or telling you, I'll make sure you get to partner. I'll make sure you get affiliate. You can breathe hard and get affiliate if you stream every day for a week. And that's not being shady. It's just that easy if you have the time to put into it. I personally think stream coaches are 100% bullshit. And that is my opinion, not endorsed by the Opera Geek, but I am going to bring CB on that ride. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. I'll say it real quick. I already said it. I said it in different words, but it's exactly how I feel. <laughs> it's the Period. same way that a voice teacher can say, I can give you these tools. I can teach you how to sing 
I can teach you how to comport yourself. I can't give you a career. Anybody that promises you a career is lying. They're lying and it, usually there's a, a price tag attached to it. So look for the price tag. Mm -hmm. And price is usually way too high. So this question's been coming up a lot, uh, a couple times, both in the first hour and now. Have y'all seen a shift in roughly the last, I don't know, nine months in how people are acting towards you on stream? What mm. happened in the last- is something I going don't... on and I don't, is something happening mm. right now? What? I don't know. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. Um, mm. Is this happening? Um, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. How's 100%. it changed? Um, I, I mean, I'm sure for uh, Tanya, CB, and um, Brian, they're going to have many, 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 many words. My words are, holy crap, do people think they're entitled to details about my personal and private life? I'm just going to quickly yep. say that uh, the thing is, I kind of... I don't get to answer this question only because I started streaming during the pandemic. I started streaming while things are already at the, the oomph. Well, I mean, they were still, they were still growing, of course. So I have a little bit, but honestly, I've been seeing people get too, too familiar since day one. Um, so I don't know what the shift was when it wasn't, when you could just go outside and have a cocktail or brunch at Sunday. Um, uh, yeah, I know Brian, <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, I don't really know what the shift is, but I, I have definitely seen people get way too comfortable. Um, and I just go, eh, no, uh, but yeah, I'm sure Tanya and Brian have some different words on that one. Brian, you go first. Cause I've talked a lot. Okay. Um, it's yeah it, it's honestly it's it's definitely ramped up and i i honestly it's one of the places where i i absolutely identify more as a twitch viewer than a content creator because i have needed this some level of interaction myself so i absolutely understand and i've also seen the the most interesting thing for me is seeing how many people have started streaming during the pandemic, perhaps to find that social interaction for themselves. Um, and um, <clears throat> so, yeah, it, it's absolutely changed. Um, whether, and, uh, you know, it's hard because streamers aren't your therapists. Uh, we're not your counselors. Um, with very, very limited, very limited cases, we're not your friends. I'm sorry to say that like that. I'll keep saying it because sometimes it needs to be said. We're not your friends. Some of you were your friends, but I. But you, it's it's knowing that people need some form of connection with someone who's real that they get from content creators that they don't get from binging Netflix. Like you know, like this because this is happening in real time. We're doing things that they would enjoy doing, that kind of thing. And in a lot of cases, we're react we're interacting with them in real time. Um, so I've definitely seen a huge rise in, in people just hanging out and people just doing the thing. Um, well, <laughs> y'all need to, I'm right here. I can see you. Stop talking about me. Um, <laughs> and if I want, we want brunch. I'll text channel, you. And I really want brunch. Look, if I could, I would, I promise. But I, you Look, know, I'll just text just, you while you're talking. People, <laughs> no. But yeah, I have seen a huge, 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 huge uptick in, um, just not even in like viewership, but just conversation. Like, I think that's, that's the biggest thing for me is a lot, or a lot of people were fine lurking before now, whether it's in Twitch chat, whether it's in discord, a lot more people are talking because that is clearly the interaction that they need from people, whether it's someone that they know, well, kind of know, know socially, know online. That's what I'm noticing a lot more of. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, oh no, Doctor Rachel, you oh, go doctor, first. Oh, doctor. Oh, God, please, yes, Doctor. I was Rachel. just gonna say, I just, Doctors. I just read a research study. <laughs> Big surprise! I just read a research study um, that came out in 2020 that during COVID, uh, people found Twitch was very comforting during like difficult periods 
of their life. And it is exactly what you were saying, Brian, because it's live. And even just having it in the background, they felt a sense of entertainment and distraction, but also a sense of social connection and social community. So it is, it has expanded over the last year. That doesn't give you the right to be over familiar. Um, but if you've noticed that it's been upticking, it absolutely has. Yeah, and it's like, <clears throat> in that same vein, uh, people have asked, like, what's the difference between YouTube and Twitch? It's like YouTube, which people were still doing, uh, you know, being way too familiar in Twitch and uh, YouTube comments. We all know that. But now you have the ability to do that live. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, in that case, yeah, I've 100% seen an uptick of people being too comfortable. You can be comfortable, but you're too comfortable and trying to figure out where that line is and how many of your little toes, your little bunion having toes uh, can get over that line. Nah, we're going to we're going we're going we're going to bring that line back a little bit. Just, yeah, just so you know. like, I mean, again, I have a much smaller community and before the pandemic it was even a smaller community um which honestly i'm not ashamed of i know some people like to call out numbers as if numbers are the thing that make you a good person or a good streamer i have a great community it's smaller it's fine because they're great but either way um it it started to grow exponentially when the pandemic hit like, just all of a sudden, I'm like, why have I gone from 10 people in chat to 50? Like, what the heck? You know, I'm sitting here being a weirdo. Like, why are why are people here? Because you're a weirdo. But, um, yeah, that's, it definitely has changed. And I feel like with the pandemic, people have more time on their hands to see how far they can push the line. And see, I'm like my mom in, well many ways but i'm like my mom you don't get to the count of three you get to the count of two that's it sometimes not even that that's it <laughs> so kelly i'm gonna take this moment because i'm in control of the stream and i'm going to fuss at you what i knew this i knew this was coming what no why are you fussing at me don't mm -hmm. no no fuss 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 do it I Sit up. I'm gonna I'm hold up the dog because you can't fuss at the dog. Uh yeah, I can. I grew up with a dog. That does not phase me. I'm an you only still child. See you around the dog. Oh. <laughs> I think if you're like, I have a dog, don't yell at me. <laughs> 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 no, because this is the second time you said I have a smaller community than other people. Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. You have a community that you have cultivated, and people care about you and what you do. Not just on stream, not just on Twitter. Your Discord is a very nice and loving place. And the size of the community, even if 10 people constantly show up to your stream, or one of us raid you, or you got 50 because you're playing Civ, whatever you're doing, your community's size is what is good for you in this moment. Because trust me, as someone who discovered this the real hard way, having a big community is not the boon people think it is. Oh, yeah. I, 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 would, never, I would never try to argue <laughs> that one with any but, of you. But don't discount yourself and the work you have done by commenting on my community's smaller. So, you are here. We're on your channel, ma'am. You all, this you are the glue that kind of brought us together. So... I'm I'm putting you out there that you are important and we would not be gathered here today if not for you and everybody saying yes this is important. Mm -hmm. Period. And and I will I will add to the, yeah I, I see Opera Geek slowly shrinking into the yeah no. You're stop, 6 feet tall. Stop, Get back up there. Yeah, seriously. I that just makes this all the more impressive. Right. I can't do that. From what no, we're you just, saying. Mm. <laughs> Was it good? Finish it. If it was good, finish it. Finish. I was just going to say that, you know, Raphael just has to change out of his Dr. B outfit and I'll never know it's him. It's so fun. You do have stealth mode. You you instantly no have stealth mode, no my friend. No one like, recognizes bam. me. Um, but, what, but, but what Tanya's saying, oh, first off, forgot. first off, gas up your friends. Sit up. Absolutely. I will tell but, your mom. <laughs> if she's in the chat, applies. speak up. It applies to to streamers with audiences and communities of all sizes there i mean there is the definition of larger and smaller but having those concepts in your head actually does you a disservice everybody 
can do what we're talking about today. Everyone should do from, from the get-go. Everyone should do this. Everyone should start curating their community. Think about your boundaries. Think about your rules. Think about how you want your content. If you plan to do this, whether it's like a hobby part-time or whether you plan to chase it as a career, from day one, you really have to start thinking about these things because they will get they will get away from you if you're not careful. So no matter the size of your audience, the size of your viewership, how many followers you have on Twitter, how many people are in your Discord, you need to think about these things from the beginning. Um, anyway, um, so uh, I had a thought and it just went poof. Oh no. no. Oh, and sometimes that can change as you're streaming. So like for me, all of my gigs went last March. Every gig I had booked through the end of 2021 was canceled. Rip. Mm. Yeah. And right now it ain't looking good for 2022 either. This is a way that I have found that I could still feel like I was a performer you know, and slowly it started to be more like a part-time job than just me playing Witcher 3 for like a few people and making them laugh as I yell at Doug. But it became a little bit uh, of a different animal about halfway through. I do want to touch on something because if I don't say it, I'm going to forget to say it. And I think it's really important. Um, it doesn't matter how much you admire somebody. Somebody can always be wrong. Somebody can always make mistakes. It does not matter who they are. I would never want somebody defending me if I did something awful just because they feel like because they like what I produce that I can do no wrong. Absolutely false. Hold the people that you admire to standards. Mm-hmm. Just don't misconstrue their comments and clips and make them out to be a quote unquote racist against white people. Sorry. Oh no, you can bring no, that legit. up. Speak on it. No, speak on it. it. In, speak say on it. it. Let me go get the church. Hold on. Let me get the fan. Context, Let me get the fan. Context like, is super yeah, key. Let's go. And yeah, no. Um I'm gonna let Omega talk about context, but I'm gonna say right now, any of you that take that stuff out of context without listening to the rest of it are just showing how ignorant. Your asses. No, honestly, I'm not gonna get into it because it's not really what this stream is about. This is about parasocial relationships, but it does. But to, I said that to say, make sure you understand what someone as as far as you know, understanding and and placing your boundaries. Don't be misled just because someone else said something, and do your own research and understand. And it goes back to there are some people who just refuse to understand. There are some few, some people who just see what they want to see and they don't want that to change. Even when all the facts are in front of you, they still don't want to change. Even when the definitions are right there, when the research is right there, when the articles are right there, when everything you need to know is right there, they refuse to change. Those people, they're lost cause. And I don't want to say it like that, but they truly are. They're yeah. not going to change. So that's one thing in itself. But yeah. with what Kelly was saying, yeah, you're 100% correct. You know, hold those people to those standards, especially if they are, you know, uh, public figures, if you will, in the community. But even with that, that doesn't mean you get to get overly familiar with them to get them to understand that they are wrong. You know, th there's still levels to everything. There's still boundaries. There's still precautions. I really want to get into this question, so I'm kind of going to steal it, uh, Go Dr. Ahead. B. I'm sorry. Which, wait, uh, which one? The moderation question. Oh, there's uh, several. Which there's Go several. for it. I was going to say, we have a lot. <laughs> there's several. But also, yeah, I think we're going to go like 15 minutes over, <laughs> so don't worry about it. But, but with that, there are, there are ways and avenues to do things, and one of those, as far as being a streamer, is moderators. And someone, I'm using this question because it's one I saw recently, but everyone has asked a similar question, which is, who should your moderators be and how do you curate them? Should you have more of a parasocial relationship to them? Well, here's the thing. 
A parasocial relationship is one-sided already. So you won't have a parasocial relationship with them. If they are somebody you trust, like Daz Biff, like other people who have those swords for Kelly or the swords for me or the sword for Tanya, Bryony, anyone, you're going to be able to establish a connection, a true connection with them. Um, and when you know who that person is and when you, when you know that the, you and them share those ideals, the, those they, they share a, a, a level of respect for each other and you know that they'll stand up for you and your chat, then yeah, that's someone with their consent and with their, and if they want to, that's someone you can consider to be a moderator. Someone you know who will be unbiased, even against you, will be unbiased and, and make sure your stream is exactly what it needs to be. I'm going to let somebody else talk now, but that's that. Well, you're bringing, you're bringing up a really important point, and I, I, would, I, I would love to hear Rach, uh, Dr. Rachel's thoughts on different types of relationships. Because, I mean, thus far, we've been talking about friendship, parasocial relationship, and it sounds like there's a different kind of relationship with your mods. Oh, definitely. Your mods have to be people that you, that you trust, and that, like um, Omega was saying, you have to know them. To trust them. So parasocial relationships are with, you know, kind of like the blurry void of audience. Like I think when Kelly is singing into a room full of people, it, they're face, a faceless audience, basically, um, but not your mods. <laughs> your mods have a face and your mods have a name and you know where your mods are and you know that your mods will stand up for you. And it's the backbone of any good stream. We were talking about this briefly on the break about how I just started streaming and how my only mods are literally people I know I've known for years. Um, because you have to have that sense of trust with them. You have to know them. So um, there is a question that's been, um, has been asked several times in the chat so far, and people have just really loved this question. So I want to make sure we get to this one. Um, we've talked in the past about looking, lurking and reading the room. But for, for those who might have some sort of neurodevelopmental challenge, whether it's autism, um, any sort of executive functioning challenges, for whom they, 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 they are well-intentioned, they're trying, they want to read the room, but they have difficulty doing so, what specific tips do you have for letting them know what's okay and what's not? Um. Mm. So I'm going to kind of speak out as, uh, I mean, somebody, again, who is classified neurodivergent. Um, it's very difficult sometimes to read a room because I know, like for me, and you all just saw it about 10 minutes ago, I automatically go into self-deprecation mode. Um, and where that becomes difficult is because if you've been bullied, if you've had trouble socially trying to fit in, if, if you didn't find your place in the world until much later in life, like I did, um, it can be hard sometimes to make that boundary because part of you is, is always like, oh my gosh, I have to make everybody happy. I have to make sure that everybody is constantly happy. And at some point you have to remember to put yourself first. But the easiest way to read the room, if you're having trouble doing it, is to listen. Stop talking, listen, observe the people around you. I'm not saying observe and mimic, that's not at all what I'm telling you to do. I'm saying observe how other people are reacting to a situation. If need be, go research that situation. Observe how people are interacting with a streamer or with each other. And then you can kind of take your cues from that. And also you can find somebody that you trust and say, hey, I was in this situation. Where did I go wrong? Or where did I go right? Because something you have to remember that I often don't is that you didn't always do something wrong. You just didn't. So find someone you trust, sit back, 
listen, and be willing to observe. Um, Anybody else got any tips for those who might be struggling <laughs> social? Like, I, I mean, I'll, I'll throw myself under the bus. I'm, I'm very, like I said, I'm very public about my autism. Like, what would you say to me? I go into a chat for the first time. I have a hard time reading the room. What would you say to me? How do I do it? Well, I guess it would depend on how you say you're not, how you interact with the chat first. Because here's the thing. None of us are mind readers. Um, because, I mean, we've been friends for a long time, Dr. B. And one thing you've always said to me is, like, you appreciate how clear I am with my boundaries. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. And for Dude. telling everybody else that it's okay to have them. No, I, th I gotta, you. I gotta take, I gotta take <laughs> a moment here for the time. God. You, you neuro, you neurotypical people. You people have so much unspoken things. It's confusing. Tanya is clear, and I love her for it. I love you too, and I don't say that casually. So, um, I am not. If you ever catch me on stream going, I love everyone. You know that I'm a pod person. Um, that, yeah, she's basically asking for help at that point. Yes, that, yeah, is, that is the sign that she has been kidnapped. The stream yep. is coming. Yes, but from also, let me say what I'm going to say so I don't forget. Because oh. I've been, like all of us, I've been drinking. Um, it, uh, so, like if, so, like, if Raphael was in the chat and I didn't know who he was and I just, and we're, let's say we're talking about something, maybe me and Brian Omega are talking about, like, queerness or blackness or whatever, and you do the thing where you hop in and you start giving, well, in my opinion, yada, yada, and we're like, whomst are you? That's not the best way to enter a chat, but if you then turn on and go, because at least I know I've seen it, Brian has seen it, where someone does that and then they turn on and go, well, I'm autistic, you can't, you can't hold that against me. And it's like, but you're also speaking outside of your lane. So I guess it depends on a kind of like how someone enters the chat. And this ties to another question we got of how to tell when someone actually wants to learn versus they are trying to be that person and they're well, not and the that same was one thing of our other questions too how do right. you tell the difference between somebody uh, who's being a troll and goodwilled well Brian, it, i know you want to oh sorry go ahead sorry go ahead. that's okay it's just it's it's you know just i and does will laugh i go context is key one because chat scrolls if you come in and talk about something we've said 10 minutes ago streamer brain is kicked in i ain't seen the chat in 10 minutes and you just or if you come in with incomplete sentences and or without the threading that was in chat before, if you're just, as far as we know, you're just blurting things in the wind, it, it makes a difference. And I go, okay, can you give me some context? What is it you don't understand? And depending on how that person responds is usually my key of, oh, you just want to argue versus I literally don't get it. Can you help me? And at a certain point, I can also go, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a clinician. Here's to take this link. And if there's something you're really not getting and it's like, I can't, I can only help you so much, but just try to be patient, be understanding and don't talk down to people who are neurodivergent. Don't treat them like they're five. Don't, you know, just get that enough. Right. But it's like, you know, be that person. But also if you are neurodivergent, don't use that as an excuse to come in someone's chat and be a jackass. And I know Brian is like chomping at the bit yeah. to talk. I'm gonna go after him because I have it's, I have thoughts on all that. There's, yeah, there's feelings it, on this. It's for me thinking. It's for me. It's making me realize that um, because my first thing is read the rules, <clears throat> like the rules that you have to click OK to to engage in chat. And um, then we also we used we use an article that Tanya wrote about etiquette. It it simply helps. Um, those two things combined will kind of help you figure out what's okay. And what's not okay in chat. And, you know, I'm going to look at my rules now after this to make sure that they are as clear as they can be on what kind of behavior is and is and isn't allowed. <clears throat> um, oh, crap, I had something. And you're right, we've been drinking. Um, but also getting back into, you know, realizing that we're people and not things. We're also not here for you to, you know, essentially... If somebody oversteps the line and we're trying and we're trying to perhaps gently or in some cases if we kind of had it not so gently get you back on course or show you the door that's not the moment to start picking a fight because you think that there's just a person on the screen that is for, is there for you to yell at um and and i do know it's it's very it's it's very difficult 
Um, Cause sometimes you know, like you hop into a chat and you're like, everyone's talking about a thing. I must've missed a joke. Should I join in on the joke that I don't understand? Like there's a lot going on, but I will say that, um, and Dasba said it in chat, when you hop into a chat, take a moment to just watch what's going on on screen, watch what's going on in text. And from that, figure out one, if that's a place that you actually want to be, even if you want, it does not matter if you want to see that game so bad because you want to see that game, figure out if that's a place you want to hang out. Because if you don't want to hang out there, you're not going to have a good time and no one's going to have a good time. And then after you've seen how things go, then if something is unclear, you can always talk to a mod. Um, most of my mods are happy to take those whispers and um, they handle that because a streamer can't always do that. They handle so much stuff behind the scenes, but yeah. I'm definitely, I'm thinking like, you know, rules and etiquette are the main things that will help you. Um, and, and yeah, reading the room in this case is almost literally reading the room and just giving it a moment before you speak up. I have to type some stuff down. Um, <laughs> Me too. So it's, but it's because I have a very, very personal thing that happened, which is why mm. I'm speaking on this. Um, so first things first, I'm kind of going to be, um, reiterating what everyone has said. And also I am not a licensed medical uh, mental health professional. I'm not trying to give you the tools and tricks uh, or the actual tangible things that you can look up that a professional has said. I'm just giving you something that's come from my own experience as a streamer. First things first, um, obviously you're gonna respect everyone who comes in the room, whether you're neurodivergent, whether you're of a different race, whether you're marginalized, whatever the case may be, you're gonna show them respect and of. However, what happens, what I found happens a lot, especially when it comes to neurodivergent folk, I don't wanna say that. What has happened a lot in my channel um, that I want to bring up is don't use your neurodivergence as a bargaining chip or as an excuse, especially if you've been warned or educated. Um, what has happened to me specifically is that I had some folks come into a chat and not even just the chats I'm in, I've seen them in random chats. And instead of saying hi, instead of reading the room, as many people have said, they immediately go, I don't think people like me. And then you have to go, that's not the topic we're talking about right now. We're not talking about personal issues or people not understanding why I'm liked or not liked. So if that's not the general subject, then this is something personal. Um, my stream, someone's community, isn't the place to air out personal problems or personal issues, whether you're neurodivergent or not. Um, that's not the place for you to begin to unload your, your, your woes and your stresses because then as a streamer, I'm like, are you doing that to get help? Which makes me go into, we are not your therapist, as someone else has also said. Uh, my stream is not your place, your personal playground, your personal bed, your personal couch to air out your grievances. Um, my place is not that, but specifically, why did you decide to use my channel as that place? Did I allow you to get that comfortable or are you overstepping a boundary? Are you, are you getting too personal? Are you getting too close that parasocial relationship that we've been talking about since the beginning of this? Are you, are, are, have you gotten to a point where I need to go, hey, I apologize if this is how I've made you feel, but you need to understand that this isn't the place for that. I apologize if you're going through things, or I know that you are neurodivergent. I know that you have this... I'm going to use an example, not to call them out, not to say their name, but this person was on the spectrum. This person was uh, had, had autism, has autism, my apologies. Um, and they said, oh, I apologize. It's blank. And that was that. But it continued. And then it continued. And then it continued. And so I'm saying this as a streamer, you still have the right, no matter the person, to make sure your community is curated and safe, not just for you, but for fellow viewers as well. So if that means you have to remove someone from that community to make that be so, then that's what it has to be. And what happened to me personally was I did that exact thing. I said, hey, I apologize. I've tried, I've done the education, then I've done the warnings, 
If that's not enough, again, I'm not a therapist. I cannot give you the tools you need. Then I have to remove you from my community, give you, you know, hey, here's take this. Here's a thing that might be able to help you with these, whatever you're going through. What's then not okay is to then go to many different other people, half the people I'm not even that close to, and ask them why I blocked you or banned you from my spaces or all these things. This specifically happened to me. And there's at least, I want to say one, maybe two people in this panel right now who was contacted on that very subject. Mm -hmm. So I'm using that as a understand that it's hard. There is no right or wrong answer to this, period. Whether you're a viewer or you're a streamer. Um, but look at boundaries, look at, look at clues, look at all the context, read the rules, read the room. You have to try, and it's going to be hard from one person to another, but you have to try, and it's, and it's up to the streamer to not be too harsh, but it's also up to the viewer to try to get, try to understand. And again, if it comes to a point where people can't understand or come to that middle ground, then my, 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 my community isn't the place for you because I don't have the tools that's going to help you through that. That's me setting that boundary saying, hey, unfortunately, you want to get closer to me than I can allow you to because I, if I let you further, I might be putting you in the wrong path that you don't need to be on. So that's that. I've been rambling, but yeah, that's that. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I know that Kelly wanted to follow up with some of that uh, something. Yes, and um, this is a difficult topic, and it's going to address a couple difficult things. So small content warning for different types of ideations. It is never, ever okay to leverage your mental health or claim suicidal ideation to get attention from someone you have a imagined relationship with. Ever. Do not do that. It does not matter if you are neurodivergent, if you are neurotypical. That is a boundary that is a very hard line. You do not put your personal well-being and safety on someone else. And you don't try to use guilt to get the attention of someone. It's wrong on so many levels and it, it is traumatic to have that happen. Don't do it. Sorry. That's it. Don't, don't. Okay. A, don't apologize. <laughs> well, Brian and I in tandem, don't apologize. Cause that is emotional abuse. That is emotional manipulation. People are calling it in the chat as well, because if I go to someone and go, I feel suicidal because I, I know friends that have had that done to them, where someone basically wanted their attention, they wanted all their friendship, and when they could not realistically give them that, they got the, well, you know, it's going to be your fault when I'm gone. And it's like, so I guess what am I supposed to do with that? And, you know, the other part is going into someone's chat and basically just blurting out, I need help, I'm in crisis. Um, because A... We don't know who you are, and if we don't know you, that'd be different if I, like, texted Brian and he was live or something and said, I need help. That's different because we are friends. But when you just roll into someone's chat and go, I need help, I don't know what to do, et cetera, because wasn't there someone, like, kind of doing that in your chat today, Brian, that was like, I need help, and they were, like, going back and forth between, do you remember me, and I need help, oh. and I'm sad, and... Well, it, no, not today, but when they first came in, it was, it was very much a, their, their opening statement was, I just broke up with my boyfriend. Are you gay? And I remember now, like now that I had to remember, I actually felt like I felt that kind of way. Um, you know, like I've, I've worked crisis hotlines. I've done that. So I was, and I realized like, this is, you know, even in that moment months ago, I realized this is so not my job or lane to do this and for somebody to come in who'd never who'd never been a part of anything never followed never anything i i just was like you know i kind of realized i was like 
we can offer you resources if that's what you want, but we here cannot, we here can't do, you know, like we can't do anything. And that's why we have take this in here. I, you know, I have other, other hotlines. The mods were in a back channel. Like, what do we give this person? Because yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Yeah. And you know, and also, and people don't like hearing this, it is okay to stop your stream. If something has upset you, if it has bothered you, if someone has made you feel uncomfortable or unsafe, or if it's a situation where you really don't know what to do, it is okay to take a break, to stop your stream and go, you know what, this is out of out of my experience. I don't know what to do with it. Don't feel like someone has beaten you or made you or manipulated you. And they may have done that, but better safe than sorry. At least that's why I look at it. Everyone well, else may know, not do that. I know uh, Dr. Rachel has something to add to all that. Um, <laughs> I just uh, want to say if someone comes into your stream and needs resources or is in crisis, take this.org is there full of resources. Um, we create resources specifically for streamers to be able to say, here are some resources um, that can help you. But I also want to touch on a point that uh, Critical Bard made. Even if you are a therapist or you have a mental health stream, you're a take this ambassador, you are not the therapist of your viewers. You, the responsibility is not on you. Well, and, and Brian brought this up. There's a there's a question of of role clarity here, which is when when we give trainings on responding to crises in your community, because that is you know the that trust is a a variant of that parasocial relationship, that idealization that somehow this person, this streamer, can help me. When the streamer is like, um, K. I mean, Brian brought this up that Brian has crisis line training, but even then, crisis line ain't his job right now. No, no, but he knows the resources to send. To send. <laughs> Thank so you, they Brian. can find the crisis line where it is their job to do that. Yeah, it's actually funny because, and I realized I probably shouldn't have said this. I say things like this, but for the longest time, with my with my friend group for years. I was like, yeah, I'm the Dr. Phil of the group. I'm the person people come to. Uh, <laughs> Actually, that may be need... more appropriate than you think. I'm not uh, <laughs> but, Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, yeah, I say I'm the person that people come to when they need guidance or help. But that is, a, that is something I've established with that friend group. Just because I'm a welcoming, you know, big old teddy bear. I can't be a grizzly. Don't get it twisted. Um, that's because I'm a big teddy bear in my chat and I want to preserve the, I the ideals of love and unity and respect. That doesn't mean I'm now going to give you one on one, you know, consultations about what to do and all that, especially not for free. Um, not on the, on the place where I am my brand as a whole, not where I am streaming and giving the viewers a, a, a view of me that is that is whatever the streamer wants it to be. That's not the time or the place for it. So just understand that, that's all. Let's see here, uh, going into some of these, we still got so many, just the, the chat's been amazing. Y'all have been just fantastic with all these questions. So many good ones to pick for. I think we got time for for just one or two more. Um, what are some lessons in managing these parasocial relationships that you wish you knew sooner? Ooh, Ooh boy. Mm. No is a complete sentence. <laughs> and that it is okay to kick people out if they don't know how to act. You know, that was something I got told growing up, but I had to re- learn that as someone who does this now as a job that you can't let people manipulate you into but but if i don't have any other place online or but it i i i'll learn i'll do better and then spoiler they don't you can only give so many people second chances you can give people only so many second chances usually one you don't owe it to anyone to be what they expect of you Whoever, whoever you are and your content and your, your personality or vibe, that's who you are. If you feel that people are expecting something different of you, that is a no-go. It is okay for you to step away when you are overwhelmed. It is okay for you to not be the person that people come to um, for help, 
for whatever the case is. It's okay for you as a streamer to say, I'm going to turn off my stream because whether I'm not saying it correctly or it's not being typed out correctly, but this isn't the place for you to be that friendly. And now I'm, I'm overwhelmed. It's okay for you to say nah and back out. I wish I knew that sooner. As someone who absolutely hates being upset on stream, which has happened a few times, um, I, I wish that earlier I had the ability to just say, you know what, guys, I think it's time for the stream to end today. Instead of trying to push through and keep on the happy face to make everybody happy. Because... And I'm pretty sure only Dr. B is going to get this reference. Sometimes that anvil gets really heavy. You're not the only one that's read Pratchett. I really? Know. Seriously. But he sent me an actual <laughs> pin that's an anvil. So I like it. He sent me an <laughs> anvil pin for that reason. I know. Some days, some days that anvil can get heavy. Some days that mask you have to put on to protect yourself from the world can get painful. And you mm -hmm. just need to say, I need to step away for a little bit. You know, and you need to not feel guilty about that, which is something I'm still working on. Mm -hmm. So that is, that seems like a uh, really good spot to bring this, uh, bring this back and ask y'all for final words as well as where, what are your final thoughts? Where can we find you on the socials, on the Twitches, um, all, all of it? I get to say who goes first because it's my stream, so it's Dr. B. Ha! <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that's uncomfortable, the mod going first. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell okay, on so, you and say how you asked me to move you on the overlay. Uh -huh. So the um, one thing I want to add as a final word, uh, for those of you who are worried about accessibility to the neurodivergent community within your uh, within your uh, streams. One, a pet peeve that I have as an autistic person is the, is the chat rule, don't be a dick. Because that is vague and it's up for a lot of debate. Instead, um, Brian brought this up earlier. If you can be as specific as possible about what your expectations are in terms of behavior, like supportive language, keeping it, you know, you know, the more specific you can be in terms of behavior, the easier it's going to be for folks like me who have a hard time reading the room to read the room a little bit better and to correct our behavior. Because um, most of the folks on the spectrum I know, we mean well. We're trying to, we're trying to communicate with the rest of the world the best we know how. Um, but we just struggle. But anyway, uh, for that, uh, I can be found on Twitter at the Dr. B. You can see it right, right below. Uh, that's where I am. I stream on other people's channels occasionally, but yeah, that's where I am. Next is Dr. Rachel. Is muted. muted. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I got kids. I gotta <laughs> mute it. Otherwise you'd be hearing them all the time. Um, <laughs> Relationships with streamers are one way, right? We're here to talk parasocial relationships. These relationships are real relationships. There's real emotional value in these relationships, but they're not the same as two-way reciprocal relationships. Do we like seeing the same people in chat? Yes. Do we love it when you're there, when we overcome some kind of milestone, like technical difficulties? Yes. Um, but you shouldn't expect any of them from them that you wouldn't expect. I'm gonna do it again from Henry Cavill, right? That's the same. It might seem more interactive, and it is more interactive because of just the nature of streaming, but that does not change the relationship, and boundaries are important. Uh, I got distracted. Omega. Oh, hello. Hi. Um, season's greetings. It is I, Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard. Hey, every day is a part of a season, therefore, season's greetings. Uh, anywho, no, um... Final words from me, honestly, again, as a streamer, it's okay to say no, and it's okay to just set those boundaries and adhere to those boundaries. Um, I know that it's hard. 
out here, um, especially in this place where one, um, people have instant access to you live, but two, you know, certain companies aren't doing more to protect said streamers. Um, so it's hard out here, but still work with your work with your core, work with your team, your mods or whoever you trust and make sure that you to the best of your ability can make your space as safe as possible. Um, and that does include sometimes people who think they're too close to you. Um, even if they're regulars, they can get the boot too. Um, it, it is what it is. Um, so that's that. Again, hi, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bar. The Critical Bar across all social media channels, you can see it below. Uh, I stream. I'm a partnered streamer here. I am a singer. I'm an equity actor. Got that card. Let's go. Um, I will miss the stage. Hopefully, I'm in Sweeney Todd this summer still. Um, but uh, <laughs> look at Dr. B's face. Uh, that is one of my favorite musicals. Oh, yeah, I love uh, it. Yeah. St. Louis Muni in August, maybe, hopefully. Um, I'm hashtag iconic because you already know that, period. Uh, but no, um, I don't really have anything to boost. I, If you want to check me out later tonight, I'll be playing Among Us with Felicia Day in the Guild. Um, so that'll be fun. Uh, but that's that's me. Goodbye. <laughs> it's Brian's turn. Uh, yeah, hi, I am Brian, Urban Bohemian, uh, partner, variety streamer, three days a week on Twitch, active games and chatting, and food streams from my kitchen where things actually go well, so that's nice. Um, in a few weeks, um, I will be joining uh, Rivals of Waterdeep for Season 9, and I am super excited. I want a time machine to go back to the kids I played D&D &D with in high school and tell them, no, you're wrong. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I would honestly say for, um, I hope that everyone has taken away something today that will help them. Um, there were so many good things said by my, by, by the people in this call with me. Um, I was going to say my friends because it is such an automatic thing to say when you're online. Um, but I've never met Rachel. So, you know, it's like, eh, eh. um, and yeah, I would simply say if you, if you have questions about stuff like this, um, you can ask other streamers, not while they're live. They have discords. You can ask. A lot of us have channels specifically devoted to asking about streaming stuff. So I would say there are resources out there. Um, you know, there are resources out there. And yeah, if you're thinking about dipping your toes in the water or you're just wondering if you maybe need some help, go ahead and ask. It's okay. If we have time, we'll answer. If we don't, we won't. And if we charge, we'll tell you our rates. Also, someone convinced Brian to get brunch merch. That's all. Yes, please. Yeah, I want I want that brunch yes. merch. Mimosa jewelry. Um, yes. <laughs> so next is Tanya, who I'm going to return the favor to that she did earlier. Uh, when I met Tanya, um, I was initially afraid to go talk to Tanya at the convention because I admired her so damn much. Um, the work that Tanya does in this community is exhausting and necessary, but also she doesn't have to do it. She just does. So seriously, thank your local cipher. Promote and support your local cipher. Hey, Tanya, you want to say something? Ha ha! And you I can't have hide behind your microphone. <laughs> That's okay. I, can... I have your phone number. I can call you when oh, we're done. <laughs> I can call you, ma'am. Um, my words of advice would be, you know, one, understand that building community is not make a Discord throw open the, the, the doors and let the dogs do whatever they want to do. Um, be aware of your limits. And this is because I'm always the contrary person on streams and we're and Raphael will laugh at this. It is perfectly okay to try this and decide this ain't for me. No one is required to stream. No one's required to do any of this stuff or understand that maybe you just want to get on stream, whatever you're going to stream and go about your day. You don't have to do all the extra stuff that 
a lot of us do. You don't have to go for Philly. You don't have to go for partner. Shockingly, you can stream for fun, but you should also still have boundaries in your chat. Um, it is okay to just go, I'm here for fun. I'm not trying to like make money, do whatever, but I still am not going to let you act like you have no sense when I'm live. Um, and lastly, just appreciate the fact that we're all doing this. Some of us do it for pay. Some of us do it for fun for both, but that we are, don't put us on pedestals, especially those of us that are affiliates or partners or in your eyes, having made it. Because for every person you think that's made it, there's probably some introvert in the corner going, please don't perceive me. I just want to go stream like some Animal Crossing and hang out with my friends and maybe have some wine while I do it. We are not better than anyone else. Don't don't put us on pedestals. Because the minute you do that, we're going to fall. And that is where the parasocial relationship will shatter. We are not idols. We're not special. We're not... Don't come in and yes, queen, yes, king us. We're just people. Um, and with that cheerful note, uh, you can find me online everywhere at Cypher of Tear. Um, if I know you and we have met, we've hung out possibly, you may call me Tanya sometimes. And if I go, whom's are thou? That is your cue to not call me that. You can call me Cypher. Um, but I'll be joining Brian in two weeks uh, over on the Rivals War Deep channel for season nine. I am looking forward to it because I know what his character is like. I'm excited, and as well as our friend Eugenia Vargas. Um, my channel, it's sporadic. It all depends on my schedule, what I'm doing. And basically everything else I'm doing is under NDA, except for Thursday nights on Sirenscape with Kelly and Gabe. Finally and not under NDA. <laughs> yes, finally, Thursday. If you like Cyberpunk Red, buy Talsorian Games. Uh, we are setting off an eight-week adventure, Thursday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, over on Sirenscape's channel. Uh, come hang out. It'll be fun. And uh, yeah, and in case you're wondering, we still don't know about Motherlands. Please just stop asking me. When uh, Trust me. When I know, y'all going to know because I won't be able to shut up about it. So as soon as we know, you will know. I'm crossing everything. There is a season two. But until then, just go enjoy the VODs. Support us. And uh, toss a coin to your Twitcher. All Valley of Plenty. See. Um, Yes. <clears throat> anyway, so yes, hi, I am still Kelly. I am still the opera geek, much to the chagrin of many people. Um, <laughs> uh, you can often find me here on my channel. Um, I'm currently playing through Shadow of War, which is mostly me drinking and yelling at whichever voice actor happens to be portraying whatever character I'm murdering at the moment. Um, <laughs> Uh, also, of course, Thursdays, I'm going to be Cyberpunk Red with Tanya and an amazing cast over on Sirenscape's channel. Um, I am also the creator, or co-creator rather, of the College of the Opera, which you can actually now buy merch for because it's got a crest. Thank you, Dr. B. It's so um, good. <laughs> um, which is a bard subclass for d and um, I want to say... Thank you to everybody in chat. That's been fantastic. Thank you for all the follows. Thank you for the subs. I'm a bit overwhelmed. I don't do overwhelmed well. Um, so just thank you for being here. And honestly, thank you to all of these amazing people that are on this Zoom call with me that I am fortunate to call my friends. Um, um. Extremely fortunate. Oh, I'm sorry. You're not my friend. No, the or I just noticed the overlay broke. The overlay yes, broke. the overlay broke. Hopefully, but it's okay. Hopefully, you overlay can still broke. Hear us. It's okay. You can it's still okay. hear us. It's you good. Can the, still the curtain went down. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, the curtain has the curtain stopped, ball. but the soprano yes. has not stopped singing. So Too you many crowns listening. came out, honestly. <laughs> yes. oh. Did you change crowns again? I did. Yeah, I, I left my other two in the other room, and I'm feeling a way about it because I should have had multiples <laughs> on by now. Um, oh. But thank you, everybody. Please go support all of these amazing people um, that have taken the time to be on this channel today. And yeah, we're gonna go raid a uh, Painting Pirate. Painting Pirate is part uh, is doing part of a three-day charity stream raising money for Black Girls Code, which is a very important charity. Please stay for the raid. Let him know who sent you because it's gonna be funny as heck watching his face when y'all drop in. <laughs> so with that, Bye, everybody. Thanks Bye, everyone. So much. Bye. Bye.